Let's go to Chris listening in Alabama in the Huntsville area. Chris, you're on Free Talk Live. Thank you. Very good show. I like your topics. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Hey, I'm a former police officer, and I'm kind of relating to what had been said. With your peers and with your uh, superiors close by you, a lot of times it is hard to, if you're kind of a freedom lover or in the libertarian mode even, it's hard to do that and enforce the law to their standards. Mm -hmm. Now, Solo, um, at one time I was a park ranger, and all of the marijuana, beer that I let go right now would probably come up to my waist in my shop. <laughs> Very good. I, I, you know, now, Thank you for that, Chris. Wrong. Well, hey, uh, if there's a public safety, you know, uh, for instance, a drunk behind the wheel, you know, they're just as dangerous as a guy with an AK unloading on everybody. Two, sure, you know, safety, I'm not going to let him drive away. Two-ton guided um, missile. Yes, but uh, you know, a guy rolling a joint, obviously not so screwed up he can't <laughs> maneuver. It's like, dude, get out of my park and uh, you know, take it out. I don't want to see you here for a few weeks. There's no reason to ruin his life and get him a booking number and cost him a few thousands over a joint. Oh, yeah, I wish there were more so, cops like you, Chris. Why did you leave? You were just retired? Uh, actually, no, I went into uh, another business. In fact, I'm competing with one of your advertisers, so I'd rather not say what I did. Fair <laughs> enough. You know, need to, need to support the advertisers. But uh, nonetheless, yeah, I went into business for myself and haven't looked back. Another hmm. thing, too, like who's to at fault? One thing who I look at at fault here locally, I call them the Alabama Taliban. It's our, <laughs> it's our public that demands these roadblocks. These, you know, I feel unconstitutional and immoral roadblock. Mm. They want to see the drug arrest. They want to see the drunk arrest. Uh, you know, show your papers before you could proceed. That's what a roadblock is. Right. And, uh, and so, you know, they want to see it. They demand it of our legislatures. We're the people who put the legislature in with people who vote for any elected official. So ultimately, we're to blame for the government we get. I think that's I think that's overall a true statement. Now, Allie, you're from Alabama. Are you familiar with these uh, people? I'm from Alab. I am from Alabama, and uh, I mean, I I did meet a couple people who would make excuses left and right for the kind of tyranny that happens, especially in Alabama. But see, I just don't think that. I I think that's the whole problem with the state. It's this, it's this idea that allows people to think that. Um, you know, say you have some kind of a vendetta against this group. You don't like this group of people for whatever reason. Even though, you know, if that's me, I'm not going to be willing to go in there with guns and raid their houses. If I see the cops doing it and I'm a statist, maybe I don't mind seeing that happen because, you know, good good for good for society. Those people need to get raided, but I wouldn't do that on my own. So I think the state allows people to cheer on things that they would never be have the guts or the uh, moral decrepitness to do themselves. Yeah, it encourages uh, oppression. It encourages people to crush different interest groups and then constantly fight over who will control the violence uh, and it allows, of the state. It allows the forcers to uh, to divert to the higher ups and say, "Oh, they told me to do it," but no, they're the ones that aggressing. So, Chris, as you said, if you were in uh, if you were in the presence of a superior officer in the police department, it would be much more difficult for you to use your discretion in those instances. And if you did, what kind of punishment would have awaited you? Oh, uh, suspension, firing, uh, a good dressing down. Uh, the, you wouldn't be able to be trusted by your peers, for instance. W- would you be able to say oh. no? Like, let's say they told you, uh, Chris, we want to put you on the drug task force. Would you be able to say, no, that's all right, I'd rather not? Well, I was on a drug task force, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've since I call myself a recovering police officer. Uh-huh. I got a good thing to say about our about our local sheriff's department here in a second. But, um, no, I, I was I worked at a rather large airport as an airport police officer. Hmm. And, yes, part of my job was drug interdiction. And that's kind of where, you know, some of the tactics, some of the things we did, you know, bothering otherwise peaceful people, just wanting to get from point A to point B, mm-hmm. uh, 
kind of you know woke me up, turned me around a little bit. So it was you doing know, that, that job where it dawned on you. That's interesting. I'm curious, did you ever join or have you joined uh, Law Enforcement Against Prohibition? Or have you heard of them? Uh, no, I haven't. I've heard y'all mention it, mention you know? it a few times on there. Do you, do you have internet access? Yes, sir. Uh, drop into leap.cc, L-E-A-P, as in Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, leap.cc. That's their website, and it's a group of former law enforcement, mostly former. There's a handful of active uh, cops, but mostly former law enforcement officers from various different places, even from, like, the DEA, who have now come around to the same position you have, and that is that peaceful people should be left alone, uh, basically. I mean, that's the essence of their position. They support legalization as opposed to decriminalization, so I have a few minor nitpicks uh, with the organization, but it's a, it's a great group for the most part that does a lot of good work speaking to, like, community groups and, you know, know getting radio interviews so like you could join as a potential speaker if you wanted to and then they put you on the you know the roster of uh, possibilities so if somebody in the local area wanted to talk to someone from law enforcement against prohibition they would uh, you'd be the go-to guy well that sounds like an interesting group and yes i will check it out as soon as i go into the computer excellent so what else did you want to share tonight oh well good news about uh, our local sheriff's department here it's in morgan county alabama one thing I note about them, it's not like I'm down there looking at uh, the re- every report filed, but they seem to be more of a reactive force as opposed to a proactive force. Occasionally, yes, they all go take down meth labs, make drug raids, whatnot. This one a little bit less than others. You don't see them running speed traps. Uh, you don't see any roadblocks out of this sheriff's department. They come when they're called, basically. That's good to know. I like to th- I like to show them appreciation when I feel like they're doing the right thing. And I thank you, uh, Chris, for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Eight five five.